I'm an economist, no? and uh, most people are drawn by, you know, by the gospel of Harvard and Hollywood. You know, to see other countries as uh, the greener pasture, not realizing that we have more, more than 12 million hectares of undeveloped land, and uh, we have uh, oh, almost a, a million consumer base. You know, so the whole world now uh, is facing. The developed countries are facing uh, uh, problems now of, uh, of, of growth, and uh, we are presenting now Asia as the uh, as uh, the solution to many of the problems now. Like Spain, they have 25% unemployment and 47% of their graduates cannot find jobs right away. So I'm I'm abroad almost every other week, and I realize now that we have been blinded to the reality that we are a country that does not have any excuse to be poor. No excuse. Because Singapore is built on a rock. They have no natural resources. They have less than a five million consumer base. And yet they're rich and we're poor. And so it's just pure stupidity that we're poor. So I want to make sure that before I die, you know, at least my family will not be dumb. <laughs> So I'm getting all my, and my children are married to foreigners, but they're uprooting themselves abroad and coming home. Mm. So my son from England is bringing his mom, his friends, they're all coming to the Philippines. And my, my daughter in the United States has uprooted their family two weeks ago. Because we would rather have our children raise their children in a poor country that's rising than stay in rich countries that are going down. I'm sorry if I, I, I talk straight because I'm 63 years old and I guess uh, uh, I'm a little bit impatient. So as you can see, we have over 500 French interns here. Because the world is changing very fast. And last Saturday, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, for whatever reason, UNESCO invited me to be the keynote speaker in Paris. No? So I guess now, the brilliant people in the world are looking for solutions in the third world countries. So they're asking what is our dream? We want to end poverty here and by 2024. So mm -hmm. whether people will believe it or not, but young people believe us. So we have people from Cambridge, from Oxford, from HEC, ESSEC, the top universities of France are sending their interns here. And so they're putting up their businesses here. So the toys that you see are already a partnership between France and uh, young Philippine entrepreneurs. The beverage that you're drinking is a partnership. So we just entered our Bayani Brew in the recent uh, Ultimate Taste Test of the Awesome Planet. And we won as the best and the healthiest local beverage. So we will be tolling it. And the, uh, the ingredients are very simple. Uh, the, the pink color is natural, organic no artificial flavoring and it's purely lemongrass mixed with calamansi and the talbos of the purple camote which is anti-diabetes if you google it it's the best it's the healthiest plant in the planet so we have the lowest sugar and the lowest calorie in our drinks and even our golden egg is the healthiest salted egg because the red coloring of the salted egg is toxic but China has always been dumping toxic uh, products to us for the, more than a hundred years. So we're now trying to use our education to come up with the first food grade salted egg. Because, uh, because of the problems with, uh, with our uh, blood pressure, problems with, uh, with, uh, with diabetes. With my, three of my, my siblings died of cancer early. My eldest brother at 37, my second brother at 44, my sister at 33. So I have psoriasis. I realize it's uh, what we eat, what we put on our skin. And the Filipinos, panaman, because they feel second class because of their color, they like skin whitener. <laughs> so skin whitener here is banned. No, because uh, we don't like uh, Filipinos to feel inferior because of their skin color. But we realize that the poverty of our country is in the mind, not in the pocket. Because we have been conditioned to think that we're inferior because of our <coughs> So anyway, uh, when we entered this place, this used to be the place of the NPA. This was their bedroom. The people's 
New People's Army. So the communist rebels mm. were here seven years ago. And the root of insurgency is poverty. And so the government also tries to relocate uh, informal settlers, but they become professional squatters because there's no job. They just give them land, there's no home, no water, no electricity, no, no schools. So we came up with a concept of countryside development for an integrated holistic approach. So they, we give land to the landless, hope to the homeless, we have water, we have electricity, we send all their kids to school, we provide them health care, we give them jobs. So before we brought uh, 50 families here, 44 of them had tuberculosis. Now we have zero TB. 30% of our men were drug addicts and criminals. Now we have zero crime and we have zero drugs here. And uh, our kids were out of school. Now we have no out of school child here. And we're encouraging people to go into agriculture. Because when we enter this place, 100 hectares here of wasted land. Now slowly from two hectares, we're now 31 hectares. We're leasing the land. We're getting people to buy the land and donate it to Gawad Kalinga. So we can build our village university. So we expect 200,000 people to come here every year because in October we'll have the first global social business summit here. And next year, since we are an awardee of the World Economic Forum, my children are awardees for human nature. So we have also, we are preparing this place for, the, for one session of the World Economic Forum in June that the Philippines will be hosting. So in October, when this will be opened as the first farm village university in Asia. And we are now starting also our campus in, uh, in Davao, in Katigan. We have one in Victoria, Negros Occidental. We have also <coughs> one in Libmanan, Kamsur. We have one in Daet. So our target is to raise 500,000 social entrepreneurs by 2024. So Pinoy was here uh, June 24, 2011. He's coming back October 5 this year. Because now the problem of Philippines is that so much investment is coming in, but the money is not going down. It's not bridging the poverty gap. It's not creating livelihood. So we have to create social entrepreneurs. Without social entrepreneurs to bridge the top with the ground, it will not happen. So now we're creating products that will use all the land. Now we're helping government relocate 1,000 informal settlers in the next town, the major Trinidad. There's 93,000 hectares of undeveloped land just 45 minutes away here. So the government is uh, putting up 1,200 hectares, relocate 1,000 squatters in Manila. We will train them in agriculture. And the government will provide the seedlings, will pay them for two years to plant one, 500 cacao trees per ah. hectare. So after two years, after two years, they stop paying them, they own the, the cacao, and will buy all the, 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 the produce. So I'm working now with uh, the Dutch entrepreneurs, and investors. So tonight I'm flying to Geneva because I'm meeting with 72 investors from all over Europe. Because no one is speaking for the people on the ground. Otherwise, all the money will just go to the top 50 families. And we will just have create our own artificial bubble of safety and comfort. And our children, our grandchildren will always be under threat from all the criminals in the slums and all the rebels in the countryside. So now I'm trying to get uh, Ateneo to put up our curriculum for business, bring their, all their business students here. Assumption is bringing all grade school, high school, college students here. We'll teach them what lemongrass is, what citronella is, and how to process essential oil. We'll teach them how to make chocolate, how to ferment chocolate, how to make the best artisan chocolate in the country. If you're interested, you can try our chocolate. We claim it to be better than Belgian and Swiss chocolate. <laughs> Because we also won as the best local artisan chocolate. Our cheese here is better than the cheese in France. So I'm sorry, I'm very, but I'm getting the French to teach us how to, to also make better cheese using our goats, using our, our carabaos. Because I find it a crime that the Philippines imports 99% of our dairy products, including 4% from Singapore that does not have cows. <laughs> Isn't that stupid? <laughs> You know, that's really dumb. Yeah. Hey, it's not like Hawaii. So our, yeah, okay. our universities yeah, yeah. raised us to become employees. To become, not to be wealth like creators, but job seekers abroad. Mm -hmm. We were not raised to be producers, just consumers. On contaminated goods coming from our neighbors. <laughs> so now we're making the best, I guess, 
the best uh, skincare products. We're using, we're using first time. We're using coco nectar, which is the best for those who are losing their hair. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> I want, I want. You must realize that less and less Filip less Filipinos have falling hair huh. than foreigners because we have coconut. And coconut nectar has the highest amino acid, so we guarantee 80% less hair fall if you use our shampoo. Let me, look at me too. So I'm just trying to, to, to help educate the children of the rich, you know, to really learn about, about the great opportunities that are available in this country. Not just to look for opportunities somewhere else, but to create those opportunities here. So tingnan nyo yan, no? Those are the French uh, top students from HCC. They're doing a social impact assessment here. And uh, I don't know. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, graduates of Ateneo now putting up their ice cream. So from, because Filipinos are used to drink, eating dirty ice cream, so we decided to, to make clean ice cream. So we go to the producers of their dirty ice cream, improve their process, make it clean, and improve also the flavor. So now you will uh, eat you will eat chocolate ice cream with chili. Labuyo. You will eat malunggay with langka. And if you drink our health drink, we have detox drinks here for people my age, no? who have to deal with high blood pressure, diabetes. So. We have to drink healthy, eat healthy. There's just so much abundance around us. So anyway, I'm, I, I want to welcome you to, to the first Farm Village <coughs> University in the world. It is still a work in progress. Hyundai just put up their Green Innovation Center. A Life Bank is putting up the Finance Center at the end of the road. That, and then Shell is putting up their Business Incubator Consume Center. When you come back here in six months, uh, the, the, that whole area at the back, Malaysia is putting up the food center. Everything okay? Uh, so, Another smile? we have many people. Paolo here from Singapore. Justin. Uh, Paolo was magna cum laude from the huh? south. And we have Sherry here Sorry? who has eight offers from, from Fulbright. We told her that if she accepts, she's only half bright. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry P is from San Francisco State, so he, he's now he's training to be on uh, climate change mitigation. So he's being invited abroad now to talk about uh, about uh, how to how to make the world safer. We have planted over 2,000 bamboos here because bamboo absorbs 30% of the carbon in the air. So you are going to breathe the cleanest air here, and it purifies the water. So it, it protects the underground aquifer. So we're dealing with water pollution, air pollution, and uh, through the natural process. If you see all those lemongrass, it keeps the snakes away. We have the three, three varieties of cobra here when we enter the place. Wow. So the way to really uh, protect the place is line all areas with, with lemongrass. So if you have, if you in your backyard, if you don't want rats and if you don't want rats and, and, and snakes, bring lemongrass and dill. You can buy them. So, if you want uh, uh, to uh, you know to keep away mosquitoes, we have a lot of citronella, and we make them into also bug spray. So the next generation will be healthier. So there will be less people with will have cancer like my family, hopefully, and they will be eating healthier food, but they don't have to import anything because we can produce it here because the Filipino is not inferior to any other country if we believe in ourselves. So this is a place, of uh, a, a, a university, uh, to really give the Filipino freedom from a colonial mentality. And now we have a lot of foreigners coming here because they're coming here no longer as masters and colonizers. They're coming here as family, as friend, as partner. And uh, we are now giving Europe access to our land. We're giving them access to the Asian market with the Philippines as the gateway. So we're also giving Americans, like my children and my grandchildren who are American citizens, now a home in Asia. And for them now, 
to build a base because we don't want to be overwhelmed by our big neighbor that wants all our land. And the best way for us to really protect the next generation is through self-reliance. We have to produce our own food. So if you want to send your children here, we have the first social business summit in the world that will be done here October 2 to 5. We're bringing 250 young entrepreneurs from 20 countries to partner with Filipino social entrepreneurs. Noreen, Noreen, can you come here please? Excuse me. Noreen here makes plant leather. Can you bring your product here please? So she's a graduate of Ateneo. She's a member of the World Economic Forum, Global Shaper. She makes this. She makes it from water lilies. It's like in the oh, same. Yeah. We actually ordered. Uh, we have it. Yeah, we all have. It. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. So now you Beautiful. see the entrepreneur behind it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She turns, she turns yeah. water lilies. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, Nikki is building the the uh, the uh, lifeline. Uh, Bayanihan Center at the end of the road because we are going now to really give access to capital to the farmer entrepreneurs here. We have we're working with 3,600 farmers in five towns around this place. So they will do all the training here. And even the people that will be planting cacao in the next town, 1,000 farmers, they will be sent here by DNR for training. And so we're getting also some of the best uh, the best experts in coffee, cacao from Netherlands and from, from Europe. That's why every other week I'm out of the country because everyone now wants to enter the, the Philippine and the Asian market. And I want my this place to be the home to, to Americans and uh, half of my grandchildren are Europeans and half of my grandchildren are Americans. So we want them to find a place where, where they, we can, they can build a better world for the next generation. So I'm, I'm, I just want to welcome you. I'm being called now because I'm Ninong in the, in the wedding. So I'm the godfather, oh. there's, a, uh, there's an anniversary there. So if you want to have your children's wedding here, if you want your convention here, you know, hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have 500 air-conditioned rooms available by October inside. You know? So uh, because we're preparing for the World Economic uh, Forum next year. But uh, we just want you guys to realize that, you know, we want to be your friends and we want to work with you and we want you to consider this your home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.